Hello, and Happy New Year, and welcome back to another RPG Developer Bocking video. And in this video, we'll be returning to the Layout tool, and we're going to cover our menu windows. So if you follow along with me really quick, you see here uh, in our Layout section, I have multiple titles. And as I click them, you'll see that we're creating new, or we've already created several new windows. A varying size and design. And once again, in this video, we'll cover how to make that. So before we get into just simply putting our graphics into Bakking to use for our, our menu windows, um, we're going to cover how to actually make and lay out our graphics for these windows. I'm going to pull up a, uh, a graphic real quick, and I guess we'll talk it through. Okay, so here it is. Uh, this is my graphic chart for designing these windows. Um, I guess the best way to put it is I use this grid system to help lay out everything correctly and cleanly based on the size you're going to use. And the three sizes I recommend are easily right at the top. We have uh, 64, 64 by 64. 128 by 128 and 256 by 256. This slice number is going to pertain to bocking. And when you design your window and you bring it in, you have to slice it up for the engine to produce the uh, graphics correctly. And we'll, we'll get into that later on. Well, here I have a, uh, I have a legend that covers um, all the color coding. And that would be, uh, you know, our yellow section here. Uh, this pertains to I have a print background and design. So not that it works here, but it helps. Uh, this is our bleed zone. And having your pixels really tight to the edge, having any important information that close to the edge could be pretty bad for your design. Um, so you just want to use this as a buffer when it comes digitally. Uh, nothing important, no words or anything touching this area. It could just it will look really bad. Uh, next, uh, if you look on the side here, just th these outer green sections in the corners is our singular corner tiles. Uh, these tiles will never change. When you lay it out perfectly, um, these will always repeat as is, and they, these could be your great accents for uh, design. You put really nice, you know, corner things in there. So, like, if you look here in the corner, in this corner, I know, a lot of corners, um... We have a 128 and a 256 uh, pixel depth of uh, a classic Mortal Kombat menu. Um, you see the details here at 128. They're okay. Um, for a fair amount of menu use, this can you know get you pretty far. If you want to go something a little larger, um, 256 is excellent. Uh, I tried 512 in Bakking and it doesn't work. It. I could try it again um, after you know these updates to see what happened, but at the time of my designing this uh, process, it just didn't work well. Okay. Now, the most important part are we have our center tile and the center tile in orange here, this is a repeated center tile. So when Bakking is producing your menus, it takes the center tile and the four cardinal direction tiles, you know, left, right, up and down, you know, north, south, east, west. These tiles, um, Fitting on your X and Y axes. These are the ones that are going to be, that need to be seamless. These tiles are probably your most important. Uh, Bakking will repeat these tiles to shrink or enlarge your menu overall. So these are the most important key tiles to have seamless effect. And all of this will make sense when we get back into Bakking, and I'll show you exactly how to implement and lay out. Um, you know, any kind of design with this method. Now, it's, just, it's to say, too, um, this is just one way to, you know, skin the cat. Just one way to do the process. Um, I'm sure there's other ways because the way Bakking lets you slice up a particular graphic, you can definitely, you know, start getting creative. Um, one way that comes to my mind that might be more advanced, and you'll have to wait for another video for that, is to have one really large corner in design and cut it up 
to have a smaller accent on the other, you know, 30% of your design and have a really nice graphic in the corner. Why? I don't know. Um, but that'll be pretty advanced and we'll worry about that in another video. So we'll jump right back into Bakken and we'll take a look at how to implement this process. All right, so we're back in Bakken and we're going to move our title to title two here. Now we're going to go under the new game continue and configuration section. And it's already been highlighted. So we're going to go to our right side here under visible. Excuse me, under visible. And we're going to select our window image. Go in here. Browse to this local file, and the first one we want that I'll open is uh, our 64 by 64, and we'll select our add and exit. No, excuse me, add and edit. Okay. Now, just like our sheet from before, uh, you know, I had our slice number, which was 23. But you know what? I'm going to show you what it looks like when you don't slice it properly. And we got this checkerboard pattern here. So that's with no slices. But you know, if we go back in here, once again, we're going to edit. And we'll come over here to the 2D settings section. And we're going to specify how this texture will be sliced. And we're going to slice it for a window. And then we'll put our slice percentages, our pixel percentages, and we'll put it to 22. I'm going to show you what it looks like when it's just off. And we'll hit OK. And since we didn't slice it correctly, it's just a pixel over in many of the directions. So it's going to give us this weird grid pattern. And if you come up here to the right hand side under basic, you have all of your, uh, you know, coordinates here. So you have your position, you know, for your X. You also have your position for Y. So this is how you can move your window around. But you also have the size. So under horizontal size, you know, if, if that's increased, you're going to watch it grow. And the same with the vertical. And so once again, let's go back and let's put in our correct percentages. Add and edit. Get back in here and let's put it at 23. 23, 23 is our sweet number and it'll come out nice and clean. Okay, and there it is. If we go over here and we cre increase the size, it grows nice, you know, and seamlessly, naturally. So let's go back in here. And I already have a few other uh, designs. So let's do this MK128. And we'll add and edit. And so let's see, let's see here. So for our 128, here I have it as a uh, 48 by 48. Let's do 45. And there we go. And there you have it. So let's shrink it up. And you can see that it's just seamlessly shrinks as it should. So one last thing, uh, let's look at our maximum size here. We'll look at a 256 percentage. 
I will add an edit. Once again, let's clean up because these numbers are a little off from learning from before. We have our 256 pixel size and our slice is at 88 percentage. Let's go back in here. Yep, we have them at 96, which it could be okay. That's not a bad one. Let's tighten it up and we're going to make it 88. All right, we'll hit OK. And there you have it. Let's increase its size. And we can go all the way to 512. And in this one, we'll do 512 as well. And look at that. Move it up. So you can see this is how it applies here. And if we go to another menu, so let's go just go to menus. See what we have here. We'll go to main menu window. Is that the one? Oh, excuse us. Let's copy and paste. We have a working one. Let's go in and uh, let's just throw that in there again. Textures right there. Mm -hmm. And there it is. And that looks pretty good. Increase our vertical space. So that's how you create windows for uh, main news and RPG developer backing. Like, subscribe, and uh, stay tuned. I have more to come. Thank you.